Master Chef contestants are known for their passion, skill, and dedication, but there were also more than a few who were downright evil. Just like this contestant, who not only managed to drive his fellow contestants crazy, but also enraged the judges at every turn as well. Well, if you ask me, I think Ryan Humane from Season 3 was hands down the most disliked contestant of the season. Right from his bragging and arrogance, this dude was even known to make some of the female contestants uncomfortable with his sleazy remarks. I wouldn't want to have to take orders from a guy like that. To begin with, Ryan introduced himself to the judges as the Flavor Elevator. He claimed that he spent thousands of dollars at fancy restaurants on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Wondering why? Apparently, he realized that he could cook the same food at home all by himself, but better. But I could do this on my own, and not only can I do this at home, I could do it better than they're doing it. You see the cocky behavior dripping right from the get-go, don't you? Well, not just that, Ryan quite occasionally mentioned how he believed himself to be one of the best cooks among all the other home cooks from that season. But despite all that confidence, Ryan was eliminated quite early on, landing in the 14th place in the competition. Now, Ryan was a jerk pretty much throughout his entire time on the show, but if I had to pick one episode, I'd go with this incident in particular. I'm talking about the one where Ryan's arrogance backfired during the first mystery box challenge. So, Ryan was the first to be called to the front for the top three position, and this is what Ryan had to say. I'm really not surprised that my plate is one of the top dishes. These other cooks are gonna have to step up their game if they're gonna wanna compete with me. Oh yeah, the dude was so sure of himself. But he should have waited a little bit before celebrating his win because guess what happened next? You managed to cook what we think are the worst three dishes of this mystery box challenge. Mm-hmm, serves him right for all his self-righteousness. Next up, in the military challenge, Ryan showed up with his holier-than-thou attitude as usual, but it didn't end there. Even though Ryan was on the winning team side, he managed to douche it up by telling the ladies to showcase themselves a little bit more for some votes. Jeez, Ryan. Do you have any dignity in you, man? Remember there was a time to flash a nip, ladies. I'm not doing Dude, that. shut up. Well, since I've already established Ryan Umane's arrogant and misogynistic side, let's take a deep dive into his self-proclaimed attitude. In episode 6, Chef Ramsay managed to get away with pulling Ryan's leg. However, his narcissistic nature simply couldn't make heads or tails of it. I'm gonna win the whole competition. Top 10. I'm gonna win the whole thing. Top 5. I'm taking home the title, Chef. Top 3. I'm gonna go home with the check, the cookbook, and the title. Even though Ryan every now and then turned up to the occasion and presented a beautifully done dish, you gotta catch a glimpse of Ryan's sadistic side too. Like this moment right here. Time to throw some people under the bus here, right? Ryan had the chance to choose a protein of his choice for his fellow contestants, and would you believe it, he was so sadistic. He chose to hand Christina Ha, the home cook who was blind, a live crab to cook with. What's more, he even had this smirk plastered all the while. God. But look who won the season. Christine managed to show him his place by simply being herself, and I'm sure her win stung real bad. Yeah, it's really awesome. <laughs> You knocked it out of the park, Christine. Thanks. Anyway, I'm so glad that Ryan's egotistical attitude didn't take him too far in the competition. And, well, it was quite satisfying to see his bestie throw him under the bus without even saying as much of a word. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you see that other sly dude right there? He didn't even try. Well, at least Ryan valued friendship, right? Anyway, up next is a contestant who's arguably one of the worst Master Chef has ever seen. It's really not surprising that his time on the show was this short-lived. Well, I'm a powerhouse guy, so I need to start with a good breakfast in the morning. You see, Mark Tongi was very confident going into the competition because winning MasterChef has always been his dream. However, he was generally rude, had a bad attitude, and was insanely lazy. Not exactly winner material, right? To make things worse, he also made pointless and annoying football analogies that only he seemed to understand. If you don't execute the basic play first, then why you didn't try the flea flicker? Yeah, I watch a ton of football and still have no idea what this guy's going on about. Mark was very delusional about his capabilities. He thought he had all the skill, passion, talent, and resilience in the world. But one look at that guy should prove him wrong in an instant. I feel incredibly ready to win this whole thing. The craziest part was that even after being eliminated, he was still in denial about his bad performances and behaved like he had no interest in winning. Where was that dream of his now, huh? Just like our boy Ryan, Mark was a little too full of himself. I mean, just look at his pretentious reaction to getting into the top three in the first mystery box challenge. I feel like Aladdin on the carpet, just floating by my competitors. I'm gonna be getting the advantage. 
But just like what happened with Ryan, Mark Togni faced the same shame of being duped into believing that his dish was top 3 material. Oh yeah, a deception so nice they pulled it twice. All three of your dishes were a mess. Satisfying, right? Well, thanks to Chef Ramsay, Mark was finally given the reality check that he needed. When it was time for the feedback, the judges reviewed the bottom three worst dishes. And well, Mark was told that he didn't live up to the standards of the competition, nor to the standards of what he cooked for his audition. And what was Mark's reply? He made yet another football analogy, which led to Chef Ramsay rolling his eyes. And rightfully so. I mean, come on, just read the room, dude. I feel like it was the fourth quarter with two minutes left and I ran out of the field without my helmet or my jock strap and I left both my proteins on my table. Anyway, Mark safely found himself in the elimination round where the three contestants got the same ingredients to cook with. And between me and you, Mark managed to butcher this as well. While Mark was busy redoing the same dish that he had messed up in the mystery box challenge, all the while moving at a snail's pace, he tried to do his very best to give off a cool, athletic vibe to impress the others. What's with 20? all these football analogies? Uh, I was an athlete back in the day. That's how I deal with this. Keep your eye on the clock. You all got right, thanks, this. thanks, Christina. As Chef Ramsay was about to leave Heather's station at the 10-minute mark, Mark encouraged Heather to disregard the judge's recommendations. And oh boy, you have to see Chef Ramsay's reaction. <laughs> The famous chef confronted him about it, all but saying that he was making a complete joke out of the competition. While Ebony accused Mark of lacking respect for the competition, Chef Ramsay went the extra mile, telling him to take things seriously or take off his apron. Take it serious or take your apron off. Even though Mark thought his dish was way better than the one that came before it, it was the last one to be called out to the front. Chef Ramsay thought that the chocolate chip pancake served with baked eggs along with bacon and cilantro of all things was an obnoxious combination for breakfast. However, when Ramsay asked Mark if he was happy with what he presented on the plate, he boastfully said that he was. According to him, he had done everything correctly and was only there to win. But no, he didn't exactly say it in those words. He had to drop yet another football analogy. I successfully completed the 28th sweep. I think I scored a touchdown. Just, just stop, man. Either way, that was the last of football, Mark. I guess you could say he fumbled at the five yard line or well, even that's giving him too much credit. And now it's time for the most exciting and unnerving contestant, the one Karen to rule them all, I present to you the infamous Chrissy Biasello. Now Chrissy has proved to be the most volatile contestant to ever participate in MasterChef. No wonder season 4 had some pretty insane ratings. I definitely want the advantage, but I definitely want to beat Natasha. See, Chrissy may not have won the season with her cooking skills, but she definitely didn't fail to serve an unpleasant air of animosity amongst her fellow home cooks. I honestly have never instantly hated someone so much. He's just an epic fail at cooking. She had one of the poorest team challenge records ever and was a steady cook in individual tasks despite occasional discrepancies. But her attitude was one of the worst in the history of the show. Howard, Natasha, they hate me. Are they afraid of you? I think so. I mean, what was that? Even if she initially misjudged, her large mouth and fierce, disgusting, and wait, I'm not done yet, her harsh, abrasive, and cunning temper somehow managed to turn everyone against her. I mean, just look at her flipping another home cook off. I say, it's gonna be mac and cheese girl over here. Mac and cheese guy. Yeah, there were times that I could have sworn I was watching Hell's Kitchen instead of Master Chef. Because, like, she was the first contestant in the history of the show who continued to threaten physical violence at every turn, and somehow got away with it. By the way, she also took pride in being a bully, having admitted that she had beaten up other girls in high school. I have more enemies than friends, because I never got to my mail shot. And yeah, she didn't mind trying it again. But guess what? Despite all the showboating that she got up to, it failed to show in her cooking. Turns out, she was one of a very small club of MasterChef contestants to not perform well in group team challenges ever. Like, take what happened in episode 5 for instance. It was the first team challenge of the season, where Jordan picked her to be in his team, the blue team. And do you know how Chrissy reacted? Well, check this out. Everybody's scared of my mail. Everybody thinks I'm kind of like going to take over. Let's go, you son of a bitch. Hmm, she was all set to kill it, but things didn't exactly go her way. Although the team challenge started off well, eventually the blue team ended up losing the challenge. Now, of course, Chrissy was pissed about it. And as usual, she didn't take any of the blame and pinned it all on Jordan's failed captaincy. Jordan frazzled everybody. It was a show, a complete show from start to finish. But this is when things got even more interesting. Before deciding on saving himself, Jordan made the decision to save Howard and James when the losing team returned for the next round. 
And what was Chrissy's reaction this time? She proceeded to call it a bitch move, saying that Jordan would have gotten his butt kicked in no time flat if he were in her neighborhood. Listen, honor is honor. That was a bitch move in my neighborhood that'd get your ass kicked. Yeah, what did I tell you? She was ready to take anyone head on. Over time, she turned into the biggest bully on the show. She refused to accept responsibility for her mistakes, held on to small grudges, and targeted other home cooks without a cause. Whispering to your buddies around you is not going to help you. I have the balls to say it up here in front of me. From cornering her fellow contestants to even getting into verbal arguments with the judges themselves, Chrissy was on fire. However, this loud behavior overshadowed her culinary prowess, and this led to her eventual ejection from the competition. But that's not all. Let me give you a little sneak peek on what happened to our very own Master Chef Karen after the show. Chrissy Biastello strongly dislikes Asian food for some reason. And well, she continues cooking and gives out private chef services along with posting recipes on her blog called Rotan Chef. And oh, by the way, Chrissy has also been banned from Twitter for posting more than a few racist comments. Somehow, I'm not surprised. But just like Chrissy, Natasha Cernyats, though a wonderful chef, managed to gain attention as one of those mean girls in season 4 of Master Chef. To begin with, Natasha, right from her audition round, came off as energetic, vivacious, and adaptable. However, her true colors of arrogance and rowdiness showed once she entered the kitchen. Keep cooking, shut your mouth. Now, let me give you a little brief breakdown of Natasha's personality throughout the season. Right from being disrespectful to her fellow contestants to being super competitive in all of her challenges, Natasha did manage to hurt a few other home cooks over the entire season. Who do you want to send home? Christy. What is going to get her out of this competition? What is going to be her failure point? She then grew more arrogant and started behaving spitefully, ranting, and arbitrarily attacking her rivals. And guess what was the reason behind it all? She wanted to be the center of attention. So when she didn't get it, she would act rudely and wasn't about to settle for anything less. See, Natasha was prone to underestimate her rivals, believing herself to be the best chef overall. She viewed her competitors with disdain more times than not, too. In a competition to come, I'll be able to take her out. The only saving grace was that Natasha was a fantastic and consistent cook with the maximum team and individual challenges won. However, like I said, Natasha was somewhat of a mean girl. For instance, in the elimination round, Joe appreciated Chrissy's mac and cheese dish, and this is when Natasha remarked. Hmm. I can make mac and cheese too. But you have to give it to Chrissy here. She could literally sense Natasha's brewing hate towards her, even though they didn't know each other at this point. She hates you. Oh, absolutely. Why would she hate you? I have no idea. You don't even know each other. Exactly. Well, this was just a small incident within the confines of the kitchen. Wait till you see the petty things that she had to say on their first outdoor cooking challenge set up in an elementary school. I was a tomboy. Bree would be like the quiet one. Eddie would be the athlete. Howard would probably be one of the cool guys. James would be kind of the oddball. And Christy would be the loudmouth. The trail of snide and hurtful remarks don't end here. In episode 7 of the season, Natasha got into a full-blown argument with Beth. So what happened is, when Beth commented on Natasha's cauliflower puree, calling it disgusting, Natasha, being her petty self, lashed out at Beth like a hurricane. And you have to see it for yourselves. That's why you will never be on my team ever. Stop. No. Seriously. Sorry. You are doing nothing to help the problem. Oh boy, Chrissy was no saint, but Natasha left no stone unturned either. This is just a brief overview of how bitter and salty Natasha was. She's honestly going to need her own video to fully do her justice. Attitude aside, maybe it was her cutthroat nature which led her to the top two. But hey, let's be real here, she might be a hell of a winner, but she wasn't winning any hearts. Alrighty, now next in line of evil chefs, we have our very own Christian Collins. Christian is yet another self-righteous, arrogant contestant who thought to no end of himself. However, like Natasha, he was an excellent chef. Despite the arrogance, Christian knew what he was doing in the kitchen, and so he managed to finish things off in third place in season two. I think they kind of realized, like, oh, maybe we should have listened to Christian. Nonetheless, here's a quick sneak peek into Christian Collins' personality. See, outside of the competition, he exuded confidence, humility, and energy. But within the confines of the competition, he turned out to be exceedingly competitive. So much so that it gave him a really nasty attitude. Over the course of the season, Christian became cockier and more arrogant, eventually becoming a selfish narcissist. He was horrible and contemptuous and extremely rude to boot. Notably, during the team challenges, he wasn't above throwing his teammates under the bus at the first sign of adversity. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. Astro's dish looked pretty And if that wasn't enough, this is him doing a Chef Ramsay impression. If you win this challenge, you're going to have a huge advantage. I don't know what the huge advantage is going to be, but whatever it is, I want it. Oh, the nerve, I tell you. 
he really thought he could get away with doing anything. But guess what? To make things even worse, he also had a hot temper and was sensitive to the judges' criticism when his competitors stood out instead of him. He frequently refused to accept responsibility for his blunders, which he was severely rebuked for by the judges, particularly Chef Ramsay and Joe. It was really something subpar. We were very disappointed. I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. With time, his ego grew and grew, and eventually, he began criticizing everyone around him. Nobody was safe from his onslaught. His constant negative energy and lack of empathy sent motions throughout the kitchen as everyone turned their backs on him. What's more, he also had fights with numerous people like Adrian, Max, Susie, and especially a longer feud with Jennifer. I told Jennifer, I think she's a bitch and uh, she's gonna get what she deserves. Thinks that she can cook better than me. I guess some people are just born to create chaos and negativity around themselves. And Christian Collins has gotta be up there among the worst of them. So right from throwing tantrums to being as non-cooperative as humanly possible, these were a few of my picks for the most evil contestants to have ever been on MasterChef. So who would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. Plus, if you thought this video was crazy, then wait till you see my next video right here since it's even better.